Quick disclaimer, things may sound a little similar in Roanoke's video today. That's because we both collaborated to bring you this versus matchup. The information leading up to the scenarios will be verbatim, but our conclusions and analysis will draw a much larger difference by the end, so stick with us so you know we didn't copy and paste each other's content the whole way through. Go to this timestamp on the screen to jump ahead to new information. So we have been mulling over how we wouldn't survive and analyzing the science behind a multitude of video game scenarios and creatures. 95% of the time, it's safe to say most of us would be in the proverbial grave at the initial start of whatever outbreak, disease, or invasion overwhelmed the Earth. But what if we doubled back and discussed if two threats emerged at once to wipe out humanity and who would emerge victorious in a relative battle royale? Fortnite? N no. <laughs> N not on these channels. It's easy to discuss how infections and alien races would fare against the natural human race as we have set defenses, societal guidelines, and overall standards of living. Humans as a species without our technology or weapons at hand are relatively weak as a race. So let's push humanity mostly to the sidelines today and pit two fictional dangers head to head in today's video. This week we cover a death battle of epic proportions. Who? would win. Left 4 Dead's Green Flu versus Halo's Flood Infection. So to start things off, we have to come to a set conclusion of why and how these two widespread dangers would clash. These diseases with a high infection rate wouldn't just pop out of the blue and fight like something out of a screw attack death battle. So in order for the flood to interact with the green flu, two scenarios would likely have to be played out. First of which, which would be a more simple variant in that the green flu is already occurring on earth and spreading like wildfire as the flood invaded the planet looking to increase their numbers, leading to a war of the virus and the parasites where the green flu has a more home field and timed advantage. The second scenario would be that the flood had already invaded Earth and were swiftly wiping the human race out at focal points across the globe with artillery and nukes not doing much to slow down the infection. So defense organizations and governments would resort to biological warfare and developing the green flu virus to possibly counteract and fight back against the flood with varying results. So before we delve into these two prime choice simulations, let's go over a few bits of information pertaining to the green flu virus and the flood infection on basically how they spread and what they do, and also how they manage to build themselves up as a threat once their numbers have risen. Well, the green flu fluctuates due to mutations in the virus's genetic coding. It can be airborne at times, but can also resort to typical zombie infection through biting, scratching, and transmission of bodily fluids. Examples to prove the virus wasn't currently airborne in the time span of Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 is the fact that survivors outside Inside the groups we play as are still surviving somehow despite breathing the air while reports say the virus was airborne within the first two weeks. How they survived without becoming infected up until that point is still a total mystery. It is however possible for people that have inherited a resistant gene of a recessive X chromosome from their father make them an asymptomatic carrier, meaning they themselves are immune to the green flu's effects but can still transmit the disease to non-resistant humans as well, hence why there are fewer survivors females than males. Its rapid approach to mutations made it impossible for humans to counteract developing stronger and deadlier forms of infected, most likely dependent on variables in the body including state of health, habits, and physiques. The most important part to note about the green flu virus is its unprecedented evolution and mutation rate, being able to change to suit its infection rate and adapt to environments beyond understanding. For the green flu to take effect, the survivors must be alive and must stay alive with most bodily functions still working, unless their mutations morph their physiology to work differently. However, they are still technically humanoid creatures and will still need to breathe, drink, and eat over time, lest they die out like the infected in 28 days later. Once infected, the host will begin to view any non-infected people as hostile, bloodthirsty, and dangerous, and these infected will immediately attack them in a feverish rampage. But unlike any regular zombies, they aren't worried about infecting others and will simply attack to kill, mauling people to death. They show no signs of coordination outside of attacking in hordes and will congregate on anything that makes a loud enough sound. Special affected forms will develop more hunting and stealthy means of attack, but are also out to kill all the same. Boomers being able to vomit and explode on others to not only call in reinforcements, but infect others who are not immune purely through bodily fluids. 
Woods, the hunter, jockey, and smoker clawing their way into their prey's innards to directly transfer the disease through jagged teeth, saliva, and blood, the tanks and charger to snuff out any opposition, the spitter to burn away the flesh of a survivor or flood and infect them more easily, and the witch to basically cut them in half. If these infected are left to not infect others for a period of up to a month, it's safe to say that they would die out completely due to malnourishment and dehydration without increasing numbers, especially with the special infected whose bodies are working overtime, as their innards are transformed to mass-produce functions like stomach acid production like the boomer, regeneration of intestines like the smoker, and dealing with extreme hypertrophy of the muscles like in the tank. Their bodies are working so hard that they are basically killing themselves over time. These are still living humans acting in a mutated feral frenzy. So at the end of the month, we could see their numbers dwindling if the virus can't keep up with the infection rate. But there could also be a whole different meaning behind the virus's mutations and interactions if it were to invade the body of a flood host. So now that we got all the basics out of the way, let's go ahead and flesh out the first scenario we discussed. And that would be the flood invading Earth in the midst of a green flu epidemic. The origins of this virus are wrapped in mystery. Whether it be a manufactured conglomeration of diseases made for biological warfare, a naturally occurring defense by Mother Nature to basically black plague the human race but with more directly violent results, or maybe it was a disease harbored in a specific individual that mutated due to their genetic coding manipulating it. Whatever the cause, a patient zero spun things out of control and within the span of just over three weeks, a majority of the United States of America was infected with the green flu, leaving only pockets of resistance and immune survivors to fight for their lives against raging and mutating infected. Seeing as how the virus was airborne and that carriers may have fled to other countries, it's safe to say other parts of the world may have succumbed to the green flu as well. As major armies held up in bases, many would lose their lines of communication and doubt the strength of the virus's mutations as many armed outposts would fall, leaving humanity fragmented and weak. And that's when a ship carrying the flood comes crashing down, let's say in Pennsylvania where it all started, making a hell hellaciously loud noise and attracting all nearby infected within a few mile radius. With the spores of the flood pluming out and looking for new bodies to add to their biomass, what would happen when these two biological monsters clashed? The green flu can work as long as the host it's inhabiting is alive. Once vital organs and or the brain are destroyed or shut down, that's it for the green flu at that point. Dead tissue will not yield any results for the virus, unlike the flood who will treat a live or dead body as a perfect host to create a flood soldier. That being said, if a majority of humanity has already succumbed to the virus, the flood would, without a doubt, mop the floor with the infected and special affected alike. Not only do the flood have brute force and the ability to wield weaponry, but the fact that even a basic flood spore could invade something like a tank or charger and within a very short period of time, take over that infected body. Can you imagine a tank but converted into the flood? Or maybe even a witch? Now the green flu infected, as a majority, have no sense of self-preservation except for the spitter and will fodder themselves towards ever-expanding flood forces, diminishing whatever numbers they had achieved up until that point at a drastic rate. There is a chance that if enough time were to pass that the green flu could adapt to be able to infect the flood as a countermeasure because with this virus you cannot accurately predict how it will evolve. And since most scientists and biologists will probably be a boomer or a smoker at this point, sorry Roanoke, the flood won't be able to use their minds to assimilate them since the virus has completely wiped their intelligence in order to impose research and development efforts to nullify this virus. But that is where the flood also reigns in with a very advantageous advantage. People like the survivors of Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 could very well still be alive if the flood did touch down. I mean, they survived against the infected hordes across a few states, so surely a few flood wouldn't be too hard, right? Well, actually, trained space marines couldn't handle them. So sorry for my Left 4 Dead fans, but all eight survivors would probably be flood food. And with their natural resistance to only carry the infection, the flood could see to using their partial immunity to disperse, develop, and adapt to prevent any green flu mutation that could threaten the flood. With the flood progressively taking over the infected, within a week or two, a protograve mind or even grave mind would be established, leaving any trace of the green flu to be eradicated, leaving the flood the dominant
dominant species and disease on planet Earth. Now, we would be resorting to manufacturing a new counteractive disease without any test trialing that would be the last, most desperate hope of the scientific and militia communities. Something aggressive that would evolve faster than they could observe from very few samples of the flood that could have been salvaged. But with time wearing so thin on the flood epidemic, preventing casualties of innocent lives may or may not occur. Military scientists may have tried to make the green flu into something that would solely attack flood spores and their enlisted hosts. But seeing as how things spun out of control, it's going to be a battle royale with humanity at the sidelines. So, how would the flu in turn affect the spores and flood cells? There is something important to note, however, is that if flood spores were to be captured and tested on, that may be the green flu could have a starting point to manipulate both human DNA and the alien DNA of the flood. With how the green flu mutated so erratically in its original setting, it may be a safe bet to say that it has a good testing ground and starting point involving the flood would allow for a more level playing field. Considering the green flu originally could only infect humans and never affected animals, it could be manufactured to mutate alongside the flood's DNA so it would bypass the need to infect living humans and invade the systems of the flood. A host wouldn't need to be strictly alive for infection either, considering the flood kill their host and take over. The green flu would actually be a more considerable threat if it infected flood spores and units as an airborne virus. Entering and taking control of the nervous system and bodily functions of a blood unit differ greatly from a regular human, as basic necessities like eating, drinking, and sleeping are now void, and as long as the body doesn't take considerable damage, the green flu could easily make an even stronger version of what the flood units are offering. Imagine a tank inside of the flood version of the tank. It's just going to be beefed up like beyond what we could even fathom. Plus, could you imagine a flood spore infected with green flu that could make you into a special infected like the hunter on the spot by penetrating your spinal column? As discussed already, if someone is infected by the green flu, they will be the generic 28 days later violence seeking infected, only looking to assault and sometimes infect the healthy population, losing full control of their mind to rabies like feral intents, whereas being taken over by the flood is a more painful process of feeling yourself die to the foreign substance and your body becoming a completely different creature. You're no longer human. That works as a feral entity that eventually will develop a hive mind intelligence like the grave mind. But when it comes to the biology behind it, I think I'm just going to push this on Roanoke. I think he's going to have this one covered. So based on these two scenarios, one of two things could happen yielding creatures infected by both. I believe that these creatures would not be permanent. Instead, they would exist for only what would be an incubation time. In scenario one, assuming the flood is not affected by the virus and is able to infect cells with scrambled DNA, the flood would have to move through the creature on a cell by cell basis. Injuries caused by the flood infection would not cause the host to stop moving or become incapacitated until it was mostly flood. This is due to the fact that those infected with the green flu do not stop or slow down. They don't register pain nor are they afraid. As such, they would keep moving and attacking as long as anything on them was left to attack with and that they can still control. The flood would have to convert major areas of the nervous system for this to properly work. As the green flu infected were converted, this would lead to skirmishes. In scenario two, this process might take longer. Should the virus work on the flood, this would require all cells becoming infected by the green flu. While I do doubt at this ability, the virus would alter the flood DNA and hijack the supercell. One of the interesting aspects we could actually see is the green flu at this point would become even more virulent. With the ability to essentially hold supercells hostage, they could spread into bodies quite easily. Another thing to note is that the green flu can spread by air and rapidly mutates, and because of this, the flood supercell may not be able to adapt, and if it's susceptible to infection, this could spell the end for the flood cell. With many viruses that exist in our known world, we have appropriate measures to either eradicate it, cure it from a person's body, and take immunizations to prevent the virus from infecting others. Parasites can exist as single cell organisms or multicellular ones, preying on a host to meet its needs. It's important to note that if a virus were to infect a parasite, it would, in most cases, not be able to infect the host that the parasite is leeching off of. However, in the case of the flood as a parasite, things could be drastically different as the flood do not abide to the biological makeup of anything Earth had ever harbored. To the molecular level, it's hard to discern what could occur, and to our physical level, the infected would be fighting a losing battle against the flood forces. So if you're here on my channel watching my perspective, you're most likely expecting me to say that Left 4 Dead's green flu would come out on top if it entered biological warfare. Well, that would be true.
through on extreme circumstances and everything would have to fall into place perfectly for the green flu virus. If the flood were to attack Earth after the full-scale outbreak of green flu, the virus would not stand a chance as the flood would take over the bodies they inhabit, kick them out, kill off the host, and the flu itself would need a living host so the disease would die. It needs a living body to survive and flourish. The ensuing combat forms easily plowing through common infected and special infected alike. If the flood were to take over specials like the hunter, tank, and witch, we would see a much more dangerous threat that nothing like the green flu could handle. As more and more infected swarmed relentlessly towards growing floods, grave mines would develop and systematically wipe out the commons, especially if the flood consumed carrier survivors to prevent any kind of mutation in the virus that could change to manipulate the DNA and RNA of the flood's genome. The bottom line is that the flood can take living and dead biomass. The green flu cannot and needs human DNA in order to infect, considering we never see any animals infected in the series. The flood would win without a doubt if they landed in the timeline of the actual Left 4 Dead universe. Now, as for the second scenario we have discussed, if humans were to hastily develop the green flu and a biological countermeasure, there would have to be some kind of flood spores in the testing and development process that the green flu could develop around. The flu's sporadic mutation rate would work in conjunction with these cells and make it possible to infect flood spores and flood-dominated bodies alike. With the disease probably going airborne during its first two weeks, even down to the molecular level, would both diseases wage war. Flood carriers, combat units, and more would start succumbing to the virus, but now the rules are drastically shifted as stated earlier. With their new hosts no longer in need of food, water, and natural bodily functions, we could see the most dangerous and long-lasting version of green flu infected yet. The green flu could win in this scenario, but only if a grave mind or proto-grave mind isn't already established before the green flu is deployed. If a grave mind of high intelligence realizes what the green flu is doing, it could use its assimilated scientific minds or carriers to fight back once more. But that also comes down to the green flu and how it wipes the mind clean of any intelligence that really deals with reasoning and high mental functions. So grave minds may start seeing their hive mind intelligence being disconnected at the seams. So with that all being said, yeah, if the flood attacks during a green flu outbreak, the flood would win hands down. If the green flu is created for the purpose to fight back against flood DNA, then the green flu could stand a chance of taking over if there is no grave mind to fight back on a scientific level and if it was able to infect enough flood units to really stand a chance against their numbers. Shout out to Roanoke Gaming. Thanks for the collab, man. If you want to check out their side of the story, make sure to click the link at the end of the video or in the description or in my top comment at the end here. Just make sure you check it out. I want you to see both sides of the story. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and, you know, contribute to the comment section of who you think would win. Don't forget to donate to my Patreon, become a sponsor, or you could donate during my live streams and you can have your name featured on the left here. I really appreciate any dollar amount. It really helps the channel move move forward. I've been on kind of a down rut lately, so I'm trying to get back in it, and I really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me, and I appreciate Roanoke for helping me today. Don't forget I have merch as well that you can rep that WoW Such Gaming Life or the Left 4 Dead Life. By the way, this video is sponsored by Aniba.com, where you can find great game deals each and every week for up to 70% off, supporting codes for PC, Xbox, and PS4. Join now by going to Aniba.com slash join slash WoW for a buck off your first purchase, and use code WOW at checkout for an additional 3% off. And like always, I'm Zach Ass, aka WOW Such Gaming. Always stay well and stay scientific. <laughs> <laughs>